Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to pack the uh, RA parachute reserve in a pro pack. Just like uh, any other Ramea parachute, we're going to make sure that the control lines are untwisted. We're going to set the brakes by pulling the cat eye below the retainer ring, inserting the tongue, both tongues into the pockets, opening the keeper. and mating the Velcro. Then we're gonna snap the lower portion onto the riser. We're repeating on the opposite side, pulling the cat eye below the retainer ring. The control line goes inboard, the axis goes outboard. We put the tongues into the pockets. Fold the axis. Mid the Velcro. And snap the toggle to the visor. Now we're going to control that, check that the barrels on the links, number six links, are all tied, tacked, and secured. The reserve static line, it's assembled correctly. The reserve ripcord is present. We place the pull-up cord into the closing loop and proceed to tie the links together. We previously checked that the canopy is in proper layout. So we already performed the six line check. The two control lines free and clear through their individual grommets in this ladder. And the four outside lines clear to the canopy. We proceed to hang the canopy by a hook. Identify the leading edge nine cells and give it one shake. We can see all the A lines in white in this particular canopy. The B lines are black and they keep on going to C and D alternating white and black. In other models, uh, different than this, you may have different colors. What matters is that same color, same line group. So you have A's, same color, B, same color, and so forth. Now that we finished prepping the rig for packing, we're gonna call the rig check number one, where we're gonna verify that the, river, the reserve ripcord is installed, the uh, six line check is done correctly, the number six connector links are tight, and there's no thread exposed. We also verify that the deployment brakes are set correctly. The uh, excess steering line is uh, held into uh, the keeper and the toggles are properly fastened. We are going to flick the canopy by acting on half of it. We're pulling slightly to pick up the slack that's present behind me we're pulling down, grabbing all, all the A-lines, lift them, and put a fold. We repeat on the opposite side. We lift the A-lines along the lines and put the fold. So now we have all the cloth between A and B lines folded in this fashion. We're identifying the center cell by the presence of the red tab and we're taking 
all of the uh, all of the nose of the leading edge and folding it outward so we create a butterfly there is more slack in the lines that's because we only pulled on the A's we're moving along the side of the canopy we're flaking the stabilizers and we're shifting back by flaking it I keep on pulling this tape out but keeping the lines on the same plane so I followed the whole contour of the stabilizer through the control lines these five lines are control lines I repeat on the opposite side from the A line I follow the contour, pull it out, and proceed to do the same thing with the, the edge of the tail. Now from the center, I open it up. These are the magnets that I want to disengage, and I go to the lowest lines there are four of them they're in this case black they're the D lines if I cannot find four of them from the center I can simply follow the tape by pushing down it takes me to the next one so repeating this process it helps me identify where the next one is Additionally to the four, I have the fifth one that's up here. Because of the nature of the stabilizer, where it's pressured, you have the line that terminates at the bottom of the stabilizer rather than in line with the other lines. But I can extend the pulling on it from there down to following the reinforcement tape. Now I have five. I can lift them toward me in line with this plane. I push all the cloth inside and that brings me to the C lines, which I duly tension. So I take the slack out of the uh, portion of the, the suspension lines further down and I repeat the same process. I pull it toward me on this plane and make another fold. That takes me to the B lines. As you can see, there is some slack that I can eliminate. And if you come on this side, you can see how you have the A to B fold, B to C fold, and C to default all here. You can identify them nicely so that when you put it on the ground, you don't have to further clean things up. We move to the opposite side and repeat the process. Okay. From the center, I identify the D. I go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And from here, I bring down the fifth one. I lift it on this plane. I push and there you go, switch hands. I push it so that I can make the fold. I now gather the D lines and the five, one, two, three, four, and five C lines, lift them and make the fold. Now I can see D to C, C to B, B to A. I then proceed to flake the slider in quarters 
And finally, I collect the four to the left and four to the right D lines and put them inside the magnets. This concludes the flaking of the canopy while it's hanging um, by the hook. Now that we completed flaking the canopy, we can call for rigor check number two, where we verify that the canopy is properly flaked, the end cell folds are showing and defined, the leading edge is clear, the uh, D lines are enclosed into the magnets, and this ladder is quartered with the grommets against this ladder stops. Now that the canopy is flaked, rigor check number two is being completed, we're ready to place the canopy on the floor. This is where we want to pay particular attention and avoid that we ruin all the work that we put into this. You want to lift the canopy as if it's a tray full of eggs and you don't want to make them rolling around the tray. So keep it nice and flat. With one arm, you lift the whole thing, keep tension on the lines, and don't bend your back, use your legs. You can place it down and move all the cloth away from the canopy. As you can see, the lines are retained in a nice and straight fashion, and all the cloth is pretty much in the same position as we had it when it was standing up. Now we're going to fine dress the pack job. I want to identify the eight black LAPs of the D-lines, then the eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight LAPs of the C-lines. If the control lines migrate outward during the dressing, uh, don't worry about it because we're going to bring them back up to we checked the B lines. They are right here. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're bringing the, the tail section up and we're beginning to flake it. We're folding the tail, making sure that the seam along the wind line is centered and under tension. So we're always pulling away. Because the canopy is rigged in a, an elliptical fashion, the lines, the control lines are not all at the same length. So it's important that we apply tension away from the risers so that the lines stay under tension. We stop and line up the rest of the tail with the furthest away LAP. When we find the red tab, that signifies that we reached the center of the canopy. So we move to the opposite side and repeat the process by lifting the, the tail. always the pressure away from the risers.
until we reach the center. I double check that the grommets are sitting against the slider stops. The slider remains quartered like we did when it was hanging up. Now it's time to call for rigor check number three, where we're going to verify that the end cells are properly dressed. The canopy and the slider is dressed with the suspension lines straight without slack and on top of each other. The uh, D lines are secured, still secured inside the magnets. At this point, we're going to prep the canopy for folding preceding the uh, next rigor check. We're folding the stabilizer toward the center. And this is the critical portion where people may do things incorrectly. And that is simply fold it toward the center rather than pulling because you want to keep the lines one stacked on top of the other. So it's only the cloth that you're moving toward the center. And you want to be conscious that you don't pull the lines out. Then with your knees, you can lock everything in place. You pull the red tab below the grommets, go with your knees on top of it, identify the first seam, the second seam, this is what we're going to put into the fold between the leading edge and the A to B fold. I can repeat on the opposite side. First seam, second seam. I lift everything apart from the nose and I tuck it into that fold. At this point, I have a lot of loose top skin. I just tuck it under and only with the top skin, I finish the cocoon. It's important, it's very important that instead of pushing and spreading the lines, I just press down. If anything, I want to push toward the center. So I retain the pack job integrity. I like to move up with my knees so I can lock into place my work so I don't lose it. Now that the cocoon is formed, I'm going to make my first fold. The critical aspect of the first fold is that you want it to make it as small as you dare to. You want to think about 12 inches away is where you put your hand, you press down and you make this fold. This is very tight, but there is a reason for that. We want this to fit between the gusset, which is like a wall, and the seam. Therefore, this distance should be roughly this, the size of this fold. If we make it bigger, when you go to close the, the pack job, you have a lot of fabric out here, and that's going to hurt you. The next step is to press down very positively so that I can insert my hand under without disturbing the pad job and flip everything and I don't slam it I just flip it back and now I can see the nose I'm going to identify the center and count one two three four Make sure they're facing outside. Repeat on the opposite side. The center. One, two, three, four. 
define nicely the fold and bring it out. And then take the top of the center cell and move it down. On rigor check number four, we are verifying that the canopy is as folded and the leading edge cells are properly positioned. Now we're going to bag the canopy. I prep the deployment bag by opening up the mouth, moving it centered to the pack job, and instead of moving the canopy into the bag, I put the bag onto the canopy. I lift the canopy. I position the bag where I want the canopy to be in the bag. This right next to the grommet is where that partition is inside the, the bag that prevents me from uh, slipping the bag further onto the canopy. And that's where I'm going to stop. I make sure that the canopy is evenly in on both sides. I press down very positively. I put my hand under the canopy making sure that I'm above the lines and then flip everything back as I'm still pressing down so I can apply a little bit extra pressure here. What you want to see is the seam, the stitching. That means that I inserted the canopy sufficiently and I folded it back enough. So this seam is the mouth of, of, of the bag and this is where I want to um, be before I proceed. I place both knees onto the bag and start peeling back at about eight, 10 inches. I do one, two, three, four, five, about six or seven folds. At this point, I defined the right and left side of the canopy. This is the center cell. I can easily, after I move the top flap of the, of the bag, I can easily squeeze it into nothing. It looked like a lot of cloth, but now you can see how it's virtually something that I can hold in my fist. Why is this important? If the flaking of the canopy that took place while it was hanging up is not done properly, or if I lost the pack job placing it on the ground, I'm going to have a lot of bulk. And that is going to make the pack job look like a football and make it very challenging for me to close. This is where I want to be. I'm going to place a knee on top of it. And this is another critical part where instead of milking the canopy away, I'm just going to roll it and squeeze it. I want to retain this fold. If I pull, I'm stripping the canopy out of the bag. Instead, I'm just squeezing it. See, I'm not pulling in that direction, I'm just rolling it, squeezing the air out. And now, I'm going to fold the axis back toward me. I'm going to define where by squeezing it and kicking it back. I'm going to step off with my, with my knee from the canopy so I can open the mouth, insert it, and remember, I have this partition. If I try and push against the partition, I'm fighting a losing battle. That's why I want to put my hand in it, press the canopy away from the partition, and then insert it. The canopy is folded in this direction. I can put my hand right into that fold and use it like a paddle. That allows me to fill the corner nicely.
this is all fluff. As you can see, it disappears into nothing. I'm not going to waste any energy trying to manage it at this point. I'm just going to put my knee on the center of the pack job and repeat the process on the opposite side. The canopy is in the bag, we want to close it. Again, some people are very effective at standing the bag up and pushing down. Somehow that doesn't work for me. I prefer to take the bag and do this type of work because it allows me to squeeze things into place. I use two pull-up cords and take the closest safety stow loop to the edge and push it all the way to the farthest grommet. I feed it through and you can see how I essentially have a grommet to grommet position and insert the other pull-up cord I bulk it up and stuff it in there so it doesn't get stripped through. I repeat the process on this side where I go grommet to grommet. and lock it into place. The lines are still nice and tight. And I'm going to manage this material after I pin it. Now I'm using the bridle to lock that in place. I bring the grommet close to the grommet, feed it, and make the first S-fold. So I lock the first stow. I can repeat on the opposite side. So I have number one, number two, number three, And number four. I carefully remove the pull-up cords and dress the excess cloth. And I don't try and push it completely in because I want this one to go and fill the, the container. This is what we call the rig check number five, where we're going to verify that the molars are filling the corners of the D bag properly, the locking stoves are in the correct sequence, and the pull up cords are removed. Okay, uh, the canopy is packed, the rig, rig check number five is complete. We're proceeding to stow the lines. We're opening the Velcro to be able to access the pocket.
um, sizing the fold to where I want the, can the, the lines to be, and then I'm inserting them. There is a fold here. If I'm not aggressive at pushing, it feels like I'm in, but only after you reached the bottom of the corner can you say that you are home. You repeat the process on the opposite side. Keep on going. Now I stop when I'm roughly at the top of the bag and seal the lines pocket by opening the Velcro and fitting the tab inside and matching it with the opposite side Velcro. I remove the temporary tie for the risers. Rigor check number six. Verify suspension lines are properly stowed and that the temporary tie is removed. Now we're ready to place the bag in a container. Before I do, I want to make sure that I have nearby a rod, a cleaning rod for pulling the pull-up cord, a temporary pin, and uh, a, a paddle, a packing paddle. I prep the container by ensuring that it sits nice and flat. I move the pull-up cord away. I shift the bag over into the main container department so I can manage the reserve risers. The reserve risers go down along the sides and I split them by moving the rear riser toward the outside, the front riser inboard to to manage the bulk with a cleaning rod i go down the channel and feed the pull-up cord through i make sure that the lines are distributed nicely and at this point is where I want to ensure that this grommet sits vertical to where the pull-up cord originates. One technique is to fit the D bag into the pack like a shoe, in, like a foot into a shoe, but that doesn't allow the two grommets to see vertically. And that ends up producing a result where the pull up cord is, seems to be too short. Right now, I have about one inch, actually more, one and a half inch sticking out from the grommet. If I 
tried to do this, I would hardly see any of the pull-up cord coming out. So the, the closing loop would have to snake through the pack job. So I'm sitting the grommet vertical. I'm exposing a lot of the pull-up cord. Then I lock the position with the knee and feel the corners. Now, that is uh, two inches of closing loop sticking out. Now I proceed with folding the bridle. The bridle gets folded back and to the rigger's view left. I make four folds to the full width of the D-bag. One, two, three, four, and four on each side, and then I come back up from the center. I tuck everything to sit vertically on top of the bull nose of the D bag and take my paddle and proceed to stack the rest of. the bridle. With a paddle, I keep everything in place while I feed the pull-up cord Now I keep my handy tools nearby. I center the base of the pilot chute to the grommet. I wrap the cloth and the mesh around the coils. Instead of pushing from the top, I'm pulling down the coils one at a time. that allows me greater purchase. I have extend, uh, ample amount of closing loop sticking out. That's because of how I placed the D bag. I remove my tool before I call for the rigger check, I need to feed the pull-up cord through the cypress cutter. And to make my life easy, I use a piece of uh, tacking cord so that I can directly go through and I don't have to feed a wet noodle through the eye of a needle. And now I'm ready for a gear check or a rigger check. And I'm ready for rigger check number seven, where I verify the deployment bag is placed into the container correctly. The bridle is folded properly. The pilot sheet is compressed and pinned. And that the pull-up cord is routed through the AAD cutter. Now we can proceed to close the container. We already have the pull-up cord fed through flap number one and the AAD cutter. You may elect to individually close one flap at the time. I personally prefer to do the east and west 
and north and south together. So one and two. I make extensive use of the knee plate. when closing. After closing one and two, you want to clean up the polish. Take number one and tuck it so that it cleans things up nicely. Then repeat with number two. And on the south side, we do something similar. And now we're ready to go north south now the easiest way to pin it is to stay on this side because the pack is like a wedge if you went on the side and kneeled on it, you would be falling forward. Instead, by kneeling against the uphill, it provides you the ability to press and stay steady on top of the pack job. All it takes is that you orient properly the plate. and kind of squeeze your hand inside so that you can pin it. You can dress it. Double check that the R cell is still where you had it before you started the pack job. Make sure that the pull-up cord is pulled out from under the pin so you don't cut into the closing loop. And we call for the final breaker check. And now we're ready to call for rigor check number eight, where we verify that the ripcord is routed through the uh, reserve static line correctly. The container is closed in the correct sequence. The reserve ripcord pin is positioned correctly through the reserve closing loop. The packing aids are all counted for, and the log record is filled out, and the AAD is working properly. This completes the pro packing of the Ramir uh, military reserve. I hope that you appreciate the little things that could make your life easier. And uh, uh, don't hesitate to contact us if you have questions about any of these.